Welcome back for another video. Before we begin, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you. Welcome back for another video. Today, we will be talking about Echo Park and gang wars and gang activity going on there, past and present. William Vargas testified that on March 1st, 2009, on a Sunday, he was drinking and socializing with seven or eight friends outside a home on Echo Park Avenue in Los Angeles. Vargas, who went by the nickname Memo, was a member of the Echo Park gang, who had been friends with the defendant in the past. Vargas had done a lot of dirt with the defendant, a lot of gang bangs, and therefore knew defendant's capabilities. Vargas surprised one of his friends at the gathering, Eric Zamaripa, one of the defendant's capabilities, and warned Zamaripa that the defendant had been coming around. Zamaripa left the gathering and returned to its own home around the corner before the defendant came up at around 5 p.m. When the defendant arrived, Vargas and his friends walked out of the crowd to meet him. Vargas realized that the defendant had his gun out and asked him, What are you going to do with that? Are you going to fucking use that? In response, the defendant said, Use it real quick and fast to shoot at Vargas. Vargas ducked behind a pole, but not before sustaining a gunshot wound to his left arm. One of Vargas's friends fired back at the defendant, but his shit jammed. The defendant got to his truck and drove around the corner. Michael Alvarez testified that he was driving south on Echo Park Avenue at around 5 p.m. on March 1, 2009. His window was open and it was sunny outside near the intersection of Echo Park Avenue and Baxter Street. Alvarez saw Vargas and his group of friends on the right side of the street and the defendant on the left. The defendant whom Alvarez described as Latin in nature and identified in court was wearing a black tank top. The defendant seemed to be arguing with someone in the group. Alvarez saw the defender retrieve what appeared to be a 9mm gun from a nearby late 70s, maybe early 80s brown vehicle. Alvarez then saw the defendant cross the street in front of Alvarez's car, put the gun to the head of the man with whom he was arguing, and say something to the effect of, Do you think I'm fucking with you? The man defendant confronted put his hand to his face in defensive posture and backed away. Alvarez drove past the men and lost sight of them as he rounded a bend. He heard gunshots approximately 20 seconds later. <laughs> Anselm Clenard testified he was driving north on Echo Park Avenue at around 5 p.m. on March 1, 2009. He saw a Hispanic man wearing a dark colored sleeveless shirt standing next to a black Dodge truck with silver racing stripes. The man in the sleeveless shirt drew a gun and fired it several times at two men across the street as he got into the truck. The men who were shot at scrambled behind a parked vehicle. The shooter drove north on Echo Park Avenue and turned left onto Baxter Street. Clenard called 911 and reported the incident. Zamaripa's girlfriend, Leticia Aon, testified that she lived with Zamaripa on Baxter Street. According to the prosecution, Zamaripa was the right-hand man of Carlos Gonzalez, a tax collector for the Mexican Mafia who also belongs to the Echo Park gang. He was also friends with Vargas and attended the gathering on Echo Park Avenue with Vargas on March 1, 2009. When Zamaripa returned home at around 4.30 p.m., he went outside to listen to music and work on a car. Aeon, who was cooking in the kitchen, could hear his music and see him from the window. At around 5 p.m., Aeon heard about four gunshots. She saw Zamaripa leave the backyard and walk toward the front of the house. Aeon similarly left the kitchen and began walking through the hallway to the front of the house. While Aeon was on her way to the front of the house, she heard the front gate open. She then heard two more gunshots. After pausing for a few seconds, she walked to the front door and looked outside. She saw Zamaripa running back toward the gate, holding his chest. Aeon ran back to the house and out the back door. By the time she reached Zamaripa, he had fallen to the ground. She saw blood coming from his chest and heard him gasping for air. Aeon tried to render aid and scream for help. The wound proved fatal. However, a medical examiner testified that Zamaripa died as a result of a single gunshot that passed through his abdomen and chest. Zamaripa's next door neighbor, Miguel Chavez Franco, witnessed the shooting. Franco was taking a nap in his upstairs bedroom on March 1st, 2009, when gunshots woke him around 5 p.m. Franco got up and looked outside. He saw and heard a black Dodge truck with gray stripes making left turn from Echo Park Avenue onto Baxter Street. The truck stopped in front of Zamaripa and Aeon's house. Franco, a native Spanish speaker, heard the driver of the truck say in English something to the effect of, Eric, how about if you die today? Franco saw the driver, who was wearing a black sleeveless shirt, extend his left hand at the window of the truck and point it towards Zamaripa. 
Franco then heard three shots and saw a truck drive west onto Baxter. Franco, who saw the driver's face in profile, said that he looked very similar to the defendant. The defendant, Andre Upshaw, was arrested and taken into custody on March 2nd, 2009. One of the officers who spoke to Upshaw at the time estimated that he was about 6'2", 6'3", between 240 and 260 pounds. While he was incarcerated awaiting trial, he made several phone calls to his girlfriend. Recording to the calls were played for the jury. In one call, he asked, did you ever take Ernie to get his hair cut? The person he's talking to respond, yeah, the dude fucking changed his number and then fucking I went down there and he was like trying to doubt, like doubt you. She continued, and then that fool just shined on me like nothing. Upshaw suggested that she just give it from now on, that's where it goes and that's it. According to the prosecution, Bubba was the moniker of Pete Cordero, Cordero's brother and Juarez's cousin, who belonged to the Echo Park Street Gang and the Mexican Mafia. In another call, Cordero told Upshaw, they're trying to make you look real bad because of the kids, you know? Upshaw responded that it says something in a report that somebody said they seen the kids, what, whatever, walk down the driveway, blah, blah. Later, he said, I would have known. It continued supposedly that someone fucking had eyes right there or something, but they said that the kids were gone, you know? He asked Cordero to lay your uncle and whoever know that it's got to be on her, you know what I mean? According to Villa Sneer and Costindo, the Mexican Mafia does not approve of engaging in shootings or other criminal activity around children. Costanada testified that to murder somebody in the presence of children in the eyes of the Mexican Mafia is a big no-no. Andre Upshaw was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. On July 16, 2021, a man was in stable condition after being injured in what police described as a gang-related shooting. The shooting took place at about 7.20 p.m. in the 1500 block of Mohawk Street. The victim, described as a Latino in his late 20s, survived. The shooting comes about two weeks after a woman in her 20s was shot and wounded while sitting in a car in the 1400 block of Mohawk Street on July 3rd. The gunfire came from a passing vehicle. In September of 2013, in a Los Angeles County court, a permanent injunction against six gangs in Echo Park was granted. The gangs named in the injunction were the Big Top Locos, the Crazies, Diamond Street Locos, Echo Park Locos, Frog Towns, and Headhunters. On August 14, 2010, police responded to a report of a shooting in the Echo Park neighborhood. The victim of the shooting, shot caller for Echo Park, Charles Ariano, had been shot in the foot. A witness directed police to graffiti located near the scene of the shooting that showed the letters EP13 written over the words Los Crazy Mexicans and LCM. Police believe the graffiti looked like it had just been done. On December 16, 2010, Charles Ariano's stepson, Ramon Valenzuela was shot in the head while walking with another Echo Park member near the game's territory. One week later, on December 23, 2010, Susan L. and her daughter, Amy L., were walking back to their house in Echo Park when they noticed a car parked in front of a pink apartment building located at 1240 Inns Avenue. Susanna and Amy saw two Hispanic men, one positioned near the car and the other by the front of the building, communicating by whistling and giving each other hand signals. One of the men had a three dot tattoo on his face and appeared to be covering something in his hand. Based on the conduct of the men and her knowledge of the people who resided at 1240 Inns Avenue, Amy believed there was going to be a drive-by shooting. Amy's mother also thought the men were acting suspiciously and told her daughter to run. Amy and Susanna fled into a nearby building and immediately heard gunshots. That same day, Phil Nguyen, who also lived in the Inns Avenue, observed a white Honda Accord parked near his residence. He saw two male Hispanics exit the vehicle and walk toward the apartment building at 1240 Inns Avenue. The men hit a car parked in front of the building, triggering a car alarm. When the residents of the apartment came outside, the two Hispanic males yelled, Echo Park! Nguyen heard the residents yell back another gang name. And the two groups then began shooting at each other. On January 11, 2017, Police interviewed Leticia Aon. Aon told police that on the day of the shooting, 
she had heard someone outside her house calling her name. She then saw Manciel, also Joseph Manciel, who she knew as Droopy from the Echo Park gang at her front gate. She stated that Manciel told her Guerrero had been shot and was lying in a white car in an alley next to her house. Aon told Ortiz that she would not sign a statement regarding the information she had provided and would deny having told him about Manciel because she was worried about retaliation from the Echo Park gang. Police also interviewed Guerrero's family members and they admitted that he was in the car with Manciel and Guerrero on the day of the shooting. They explained that Carlos had said Manciel and Guerrero were supposed to conduct the shooting and that Rojas was responsible for driving the getaway car. After identifying Manciel and Rojas as potential suspects, police requested that the two men participate in a live lineup. Police placed a hidden camera in the area where Manciel and Rojas were held prior to the lineup and videotaped their conversation. The conversation showed that they talked about, we should have run when we had the chance, fool. Adding, if we do fucking dodge this one, fool, when we get out, we're just going to have to fucking just chill. After Rojas warned Manciel the police were trying to set them up and not the trip, Manciel responded, I'm good. I just want to know who it was. Fucking right. And it can't be Vanessa. She wasn't there that day. Has to be somebody else. Later in the conversation, Manciel stated, The fuck are they going to try and charge us of? Murder? These fools fucking blasted us back. That's crazy, huh? After the lineup was over, police came back into the room and informed the suspects that the witnesses were unable to identify Rojas, but did identify Manciel. When police left, Rojas stated that the officer was straight lying, asserting they can't really recognize me because I was the driver. Fuck, we weren't even there. That's how you know if they had their own little story they made up, fool. Rojas further stated that he would take the rap for Manciel. In response, Manciel told Ross, Don't say shit, adding, If you take it, you're going to end up fucking yourself up because you might just get out of this, fool. You said they can't recognize you. Rojas and Manciel then both repeatedly stated they would be fine because they had not done anything wrong. Although the shooting may have seemed self-defense, the jury found Joseph Manciel guilty of first-degree murder and found Rojas guilty of secondary murder. Both were found guilty of all remaining counts and found that attempted murders had been premeditated. Joseph Montiel received a term of 90 years to life in prison and Carlos Rojas to an aggregated term of 80 years to life in prison. I want to thank you all for watching. Again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you.